So before we start charging this thing with solar, last night I powered this fan here. It's like a, you know, air cleaner thingy, uh, filters the air. I like it because it makes noise and it's a constant sound. It's a white noise, but I powered it last night using this and this. So it took about 60 watts at the speed I had it on and it completely drained all of this into that. Like this doesn't turn on at all right now. Then it took over and ran the rest of the night on this. It almost lasted the entire night. It was like seven, six and a half hours or so. Then it completely died. And then today, since I'm making this video on the solar panel and I wanted to charge this, this, and this on solar, I needed this to also be dead. So right now, since it was 100%, I'm putting 140 watts into this thing right here. And then this thing right here is taking away 100 watts. And then I've got this little guy charging, so it's drawn a few watts. And then I got my iPhone charging. So now we're drawing 125 watts and we're replacing 135 watts with this thing. But then this thing is charging my iPad Pro. So it's doing 135 out plus whatever my iPad's getting. So yeah, this is my easy way of draining all three of these power banks. <laughs> So, yeah, we're, we're almost taking away exactly as much as we're drawing, which is kind of the goal, it's what I wanted to achieve. And then this thing, you know, obviously the goal is to get it down lower so that it can charge via solar. Hey, that kind of rhymes. <laughs> What's going on, YouTube? This is what we're Josh do. This is an exciting video. And yes, this is my NVIDIA Shield portable shirt that I got years and years ago when I did the unboxing. And believe it or not, these pants are clean. This is just bleach stain from when I uh, had a bottle of bleach drip on me. All right, we're using our camera's built-in mic because this, this is a rather large unboxing and uh, we need to do it inside on the floor. So let's open this up. This isn't like a brand new release, but it is new. And the important thing is it should be within the voltage needed for the Anchor 548, the Solix C300, and the Solix C300 DC. All right, so take a look at the front of it. This has me super excited because it's only two pieces when you fold it open. With this thing right here, if you watch the video, it's four pieces and it has three legs to hold up those four pieces. So this is a much larger unit overall. And also the voltage was almost 30 volts, I believe. And this one has the voltage on the back of it, but it is the Anchor Solix outdoor charging with 1.5X higher conversion, water resistant IP67, four adjustable angles, scratch resistant, this is the PS100 portable solar panel, 100 watts. This was provided to me for free by Anchor for my honest thoughts on it. Like they just want me to post a video and share my thoughts, that's all. I'm not being paid to make this video and they're not reviewing this content. Just full disclosure there. Now here it says that the voltage is 24.5 volts and the Anchor 548 and the Solix C300 require up to 28 volts. So this should have no problem powering those things. So that's awesome. This is model number 82434. And yeah, let's go ahead and get it out of this box. And then we're gonna go outside. I have to work today, so I might have to leave before. If I have time, I'm going to do it today. But if not, I mean, it doesn't really matter to you because when you watch the video, it'll all be one video and the power of editing. Alrighty, let's get the panel out of here. Oh yes, oh yes, that is, that is definitely awesome. All right, so now we have a goodies box. Let's go over the goodies box. I've lost my remote, I've had this camera, this camera that you're watching the video with, I've had it since 2013 or 14, so. It's been 10 years. I think it was 14. It was, it was right when I got my new car. It's not new anymore. I don't have it anymore. 
All right, cool. So if you use their Anchor 521 or 522, the difference between the two is the 522 has two USB-C and the 521 has one USB-C, but it requires a DC input for the solar. So this is an XT62 DC adapter. And then here we have MC4 to XT60. This is great. You love to see that. That's what's nice about the Solix C300 and the DC is it takes the XT60 instead of converting XT60 to DC and ugh. And then these are just extension cables. So if you want your solar panel to be further away from your like setup. So basically like, you know, obviously outside and then run the cable inside that can be further away using this extension cable. And then we have a user manual. So we'll connect up the leads here. All right, here's the panel. This is super cool. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes more sense. So you've got your leads here. This is gonna be your positive, and this is gonna be your negative. And then it just opens up. It's just a two folding part. Look at that. You got one part, two parts. That's it, that's it. So then you've got a leg here, and we're gonna adjust this by moving it up one slot. We're gonna do the same thing with this other one, move it up one slot, and then there you have it. This is what's so beautiful about this panel versus the other one, is it's just two parts, that's it. And then when you're done, look at this. Yeah, it's closed, it's done, it's over. That is so simple. Obviously you gotta click these little buttons in and secure these from flopping around everywhere, but that was as quick. And then look at the setup, right? So let's see how fast we can do this. Closing it. Done. Opening it up. Done. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah. That is a much nicer setup than the old one. All right, let's go uh, play out in the sun for a few minutes. All right, we're outside. I can tell you I'm enjoying this uh, way more for setup than the other one. Not that the other one was difficult. I'm just enjoying it a lot more. And so now we're outside. We're gonna connect up this guy and we're gonna put it into the XT60. And we're gonna see. Oh, right away, right away. So what are we getting here? It's gonna create all oh, 74, 82, 83. So with this pretty good, I don't wanna put my panel out on the road where someone drives by and runs it over, but this is sick, dude. This is sick. So we don't have the best sunlight right now, but it's definitely not bad either. And oh my gosh, it's just such a perfect panel. It's great. And we're getting 81 watts into this thing, 82. So with this current sun, if we get it for three and a half hours, this battery will go from empty to full. That's actually incredible. That's awesome. And with a little more sun, We'll get closer to like 90, 95 watts and be able to charge slightly faster. But damn, that's awesome. That's freaking sick. And so with this guy, it's the same thing. So we'll just plug it in. And the little light comes on. And we're getting 67 watts right away, 78. That's super freaking cool. And then this thing right here is capable of receiving up to 60. I've seen it do 65 in my previous testing where the video is called Charging My Anchor 548 in the Sun. So plugging that in. Oh, it may not actually work with this one. So Anchor Support actually sent emails out recommending a panel from a different company that ended up charging this thing via the sun just fine. But it looks like, oh, it's up to 24 volts. Where did I see that right here? 24 volts, three amps for 60 watts max. This panel actually produces 24.4. So you don't want to use this with the Anchor 548. Do not do that. With these, it literally says 11 to 28 volts. So we are within a safe range for the solar input on both of these. And you want to be careful and you want to absolutely make sure because if you were to put too much volts into it, you could kill it. So. You definitely want to be careful and not just plug in anything like I did. <laughs> I really thought it was fine though, but clearly it was not. All right, let's see if we can adjust this panel and get a little bit better results. 
So we've got the sun, and then, I don't know. I don't know if getting it any lower or higher would be better. Let's adjust it one more and see if that makes a difference. This is just so incredibly simple and easy to do. All right, so we were getting 73 watts. So let's move it back. All right, so I also did the third one, or actually the second one. All right, we're getting even worse results. So let's put it in the... So we found out which one's the most ideal right now with our where our sun's currently facing. And it's definitely this second one here. We'll remove it from this one and put it on the second one. So we have one more. And then we just let it lean back. Lean back. Lean back. All right, so with our current sun, 74 watts is going to be the best we get right now. But that's not bad at all. That's just so exciting to me. Because uh, there was a time when I was out in the field, we were out in the desert, and uh, yeah, having this thing near my tent and having this thing inside my tent and being able to charge a laptop or a game console or, or even a phone to communicate with family back home, like, oh my gosh, no need for an AC outlet anywhere nearby because you've got sun and then you have DC or AC, whichever one you need more. That's awesome. All right, I wanted to get a good little thumbnail for the video. I hope this works. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Now I need to pack up all this stuff and go back inside because I gotta leave for work. Ah.